Commons, as well as book and the shift in audio versus that'll be there just a basic assumptions of the large capital items yep. that would be helpful. We will definitely include that in the April meeting. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Be there or be square. Okay. Um, Trustee <laughs> Wolf. Yes. Uh, we're moving it on to the next discussion <laughs> item, which is trustee attendance at board meetings. Yes, and it just came up as kind of a of our um, out of the discussion we had at the last board meeting when we were we were trying to put together the the guidelines for for board members, and I just thought it made sense to also have in there um, what level of attendance there should be that should be expected slash required of a board member. Obviously, as people get onto a board, things in their lives might change, and, and they can't can't fulfill the responsibility. And then, what do we do if you know in terms of someone who can't be present? Um, uh, at board meetings, and should there be some kind of consequence or a, a mechanism to possibly um, have them no longer be active on the board if, if they're not able to participate in enough of the actual board meetings? Um, and then also, as I have discussed um, uh, and, and thought about, uh, also it should go for maybe as far as committee committees as well. So that's my discussion point. I mean, there's no points. question that the business of the library, from the board point of view, takes place and board meetings and committee meetings, uh, one of our m more important obligate, you know, responsibilities is to hire a director. And I think we all, or most of us, took a lot of time and effort in that regard. The other is the budget. Those are the really, you know, some big things that we, and, um, I think the people of Wilmette are entitled to the active participation of the people they elect to this role. So I, I agree with that. Um, and thank you for raising that. I, one of the, the next item is, um, well, there's two down as a policy committee. Um, and that might be something that, you know, could be fleshed out a little bit and just a policy in, you know, for the library of, of discussing yeah. that. So thank you for, you know. Jenny? I, I just have two comments. Um, sorry, are we, is this a good time to comment? Sure. Um, so my first comment is maybe for just for all our consideration, what would be um, a threshold for how many meetings? Is it 50%? Would there be an exception in case of a long-term illness? Just that kind of thing. Just I'm not asking for answers, mm -hmm. but just the question of that, and now I'm going to forget my second thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, one of the um, things that we discussed with Anthony, there really is, because we're elected, Right. unless you are totally flagrant, they're flagrant, there's not much you can really do. You can set policy, but you really yeah. can't oust anybody. Right. So it's you nice are to elected. do. Right. And, and I, but they, uh, my second point was, is there, would it help us to just look at um, peer libraries mm -hmm. and see um, I mean, I'm sure that there isn't like a statutory requirement um, as far as a threshold of how many meetings you come to, but um, is there some sort of cultural thing or, you know, um, maybe other directors would have some insight on that. Um, but just as we, I, I, well, it will have to be a new policy, obviously, since we don't have a policy right now, as but, far as I know. <laughs> but can you have a um, policy in? Uh, I if mean, it it's sort of a catch twenty two because right. really, if there's no repercussions, we can't. yeah, then you can you can have a policy so that it says it's time for a conversation. And, and as I said, they want to have a At mechanism a in place. As I said, someone may get on the board, and then all of a sudden their life takes turns that aren't expected, and so they may want to, you know, get off the board. And we, and we do. I know we have some language in there already that that we touched on last time about. Um, if someone has to leave, again moves or whatever, and then and then to, to fill the appointment, how that's filled, depending on how much time's left before the next election cycle. But just the idea, and then on, on top of what you said, Kathleen, yes, I mean it's um, in terms of what we do as a board, um, there is kind of a like an appropriate sequence and timing of when issues are raised. And so if 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 we as a board are deciding something and and, the, and other board members aren't available and things come up after the fact, it's almost like it's the, the door's almost closed and we, we, we already spent a lot of time and energy on something when all of a sudden some other additional issue might come up. And that's that's counterproductive to both, I think, the board work and to the library itself. And so, yes, we're elected and we have a responsibility both mm -hmm. to the people that elect us, but also to the, making sure the library runs as well as it could and, and that we as a board help that versus hinder that. But so, if we follow and, parliamentary procedure, once it's 
a ruling has been voted, you really mm -hmm. can't backslide and bring it back up time and time again. Right. It, and so and that's the, exactly. And those, so those kinds of things could could be acknowledged in this policy as well. So that, that again, we don't we don't have these things that kind of linger, even though we've we, if the majority of the board's already kind of resolved something, and, and that's that's pardon. Approved. Yeah, no, once it's oh. voted on, it's... Right, right, right. <laughs> um, there should be a sense of finality after... Yeah, and I... Yeah. Is it worth a question to Roger? I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not looking... I mean, I'm not looking to... Mm -hmm. the, we're trying to do... Just trying to do something, again, that, 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 as I said, helps to serve the three aspects of being a board member, which is the library, the community, and the board itself. I mean, I think this would be a great item as maybe the next one, too, to for the very shortly to be appointed trustee policy committee. <laughs> uh, so to really go in and look at those items um, and see how we can all be the best trustees that we can be for the village of Walnut. So. And, and then also as a part of that too, how, um, how board members interact both, I think, with other board members, with the director, and then with other um, department heads and employees in the library. I think that that's very important. I, again, I don't know. I don't come, you come from a legal background, Kathleen, so I don't know. But as I said, just to make sure that we're doing other things to to protect um, the integrity of, 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 of how we as a board operate and, and that we don't overstep our bounds in terms of um, mm -hmm. uh, interfering um, or uh, disrupting I, I, things I in I the agree. library operations. Yeah. Trustees going directly to an individual employee can be fraught, can be, you know, awkward, difficult, um, and you know, should not be, you know, necessarily encouraged. There are some situations I will be candid. I've already spoken with Bob directly on some uh, things as president. Um, but, um, you know, some of these things that could be helpful, you know, some of the trustee workshops as well, I think, you know, all learning how to do things the right way. Well, I yeah. think, too, if we have a, a written policy of some kind that everybody agrees upon, then for new trustees, when they come in, they'll have that to look at, and it will show them how they are expected to fulfill their duties. Because we, yeah, we do have two new trustees coming in very shortly, so that's, it is, you know, and that's, and, and so I think that's, that's a good point, Jan. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then, yeah, um, there's one more thing I was going to say. I, I've got, like, Jenny, my thought left the train. Oh, I left the sta <laughs> my train of thought left the station without me. Um, um, What's your other thing? Um, but yeah, I, mean, I think we've covered most of it. But I, uh, also, how again, how we represent the board's perspective on something. And, and at least when I came on the board, my understanding was I shouldn't, as a board member, be talking to the media or even to other community members about what the board is thinking. That's really that's up to the director right. and it's up to the president to be doing that, um, to be speaking on behalf of the board. So those things I think need to be reiterated again for the new members coming on and mm -hmm. in general, just as a, as a policy. Yeah, policy rule, rules of thumb. That and I don't know, Lisa. To your yeah, to your point again, I I don't. Except I think that one's in in the is policy. It? I, that, that it's some. It that was somewhere. my understanding. It yeah, shows so. up somewhere. We have a communication policy. Yeah, yeah that, that is that it is codified in there. Through. But then we're being careful to do, when you're talking as an individual and when you're speaking yes. Yes. on behalf exactly. of yeah. the yeah. library. Mm -hmm. right. So I think those things are all important. It as doesn't we, mean you can't continue. You know, obviously there be policies people can dissent from. We're elected to have our opinions, but you need to make it clear when you're talking what hat you're wearing. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Um, I have some information I can share that can contribute to this conversation okay. if you would like. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. So I have spoken with some of my peers about how they manage this with their individual boards. And one of the points that has come forward is that a lot of boards will have um, not necessarily a policy, because I think it is true that some of the things that we're talking about here are, would be difficult to contain within policy because there's really no legal standpoint for some of this. Mm -hmm. For example, the initial thing that we were discussing about um, uh, a trustee's performance, if a trustee is unable to attend a certain number of meetings, um, at what point would they be excused from the board? Um, on a statutory basis, um, it would be 12 meetings that they would not be able to attend, so the monthly meeting they would have to miss a full year of, of meetings um, in order to be deemed um, incompetent in, in their performance of, of their duties. 
um, mm -hmm. and that would be to allow another individual to fulfill that, that duty in service to the community. Um, so I, I think that's a rather unlikely event, um, although this does happen in some more rural districts, and there's been some discussion within the Public Policy Committee right now to talk about that because there are actually some boards, uh, some library boards in the state that are not able to actually conduct their business. They can't approve minutes, they can't approve their bills mm -hmm. because they can't form a forum because they don't have enough trustees showing up at their meetings. Mm -hmm. um, that thankfully is not the case with our board. Um, in terms of other you know, performance factors, there may be other things that you'll want to consider in terms of what the expectations are that the board has. So when I asked other, other library directors, how do you manage this, um, a board president would put together, um, an example would be a board president would put together a set of expectations. Um, this is the culture of the board. This is how we do our business. This is how we communicate. Um, we show up on time for meetings. We, you know, um, make sure that we correspond with people. We vow to uphold, you know, the Open Meetings Act and so on. Um, we will re reply to emails within 48 hours. Um, we'll be sure not to communicate with staff members, or if we have a question for a staff member, we'll make sure that the director is aware of that we're going to have that correspondence. Whatever the case is, they will set forth, you know, certain expectations for their, their own interest internal code of conduct. It's not necessarily a policy, maybe it's a procedure, but it's a, a code of conduct basically or, or a, a, sort, a sort of pact for how they would conduct their business. And I think that that, um, uh, that is definitely within the rights of, of the, the board president or a committee to decide, hey, this is how we want to organize ourselves and communicate. When we were talking about um, our bylaws, when we recently were revising those, mm -hmm. there was some discussion. Is this the type of content that we would want to put into the bylaws? The bylaws really lean heavily upon our, um, our statutory requirements, um, the Open Meetings Act, FOIA, um, all, all of the things that, that help us to conduct our business. These things are more soft um, methods about how we conduct our business and less related to our, our, um, our legal requirements. Okay. Well, thank you. So I think this is... Hey, Dan. Did you say something? Dan? Oh, sorry. I'm trying to charge my phone. Sorry for the buzzing. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, like I think this is something that is a good conversation, and it's one that boards should have. You know, some boards do a board retreat, um, and um, I only have this and one more meeting, so obviously I and Ginny would not be part of that. Um, but... Um, and I think as in, you know, we're all trying to do the best for the library and well, you could explore come ways back to and do that. For us hindsight. Yeah. Yes. 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 Our yes. wisdom. Because, right. Because right. there was a discussion <laughs> doing, there was, yeah. there was a discussion of doing a, court, uh, a library board retreat at Plaza del Lago. Yeah. Uh, so, um, okay, this is good discussion, and I think there's some fruitful, some, some good ideas here that I think can be put together, together with the to be appointed policy committee. And, um, uh, but the next item on the agenda um, is something Trustee Johnson wanted, which is a discussion of the videotaping of all open committee meetings. As you know, the board meeting is, is, um, is taped. There is an audio tape um, of all committee ta uh, meetings. We have not um, uh, videotaped uh, committee meetings. Um, Trustee Johnson, do you want to speak to that first? No, I, I mean, I appreciate you putting it on the agenda. And, uh, you know, I think it's clear what the idea is and probably why we could do it. I mean, hopefully we well, can do it as soon as practical. Would you explain, uh, at least for me, why you feel it's necessary to do this? Well, it's you know, easy to catch up on meetings that you can't attend, and um, we're already recording it, so it's sort of catching up with the technology. Uh, committee meetings are important, so we should be as transparent as we possibly can. And since it's really easy to videotape a meeting, uh, I don't think we post our audio, but um, we ought to, and we ought to um, videotape our committee meetings, so interested members of the public or those of us that can't make a committee meeting because of work obligations uh, can catch it when it's convenient for us to catch it. Stay on top of things. Yeah, I'm just wondering why 
uh, you, feel, you obviously feel that you can get more information from, vid from videotaping than just from recording it. And I wondered what, what the difference is. Not a I mean, look, podcast, huh? If we, <laughs> yeah, if we posted the audio, that's, you know, half is good. That'd be fine. But, um, it'll be less, you know, any, any it'll, way it'll to save cost to do that. that yeah. People can you review just, it. You just need a better quality of recorder, but it'd be easier to do that. I listen to audio. I rarely look at anybody's video. Right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> stay yeah audio, audio, I mean, look, if, if we posted the audio we're already taking, I think that's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Anthony, Might you, be something for more um, discussion. You did. Did you get a chance to look into what practice of uh, other libraries are with respect to this item? I have. Um, so this um, this is at the board's discretion. There's no statutory requirement for us to do so. It does mm -hmm. demonstrate that we are transparent and that we are. Um, exceptional in that regard. Um, what I have found, and after speaking with our attorney, he represents um, uh, dozens of, of libraries. Um, there are fewer than five that are videotaping their board meetings right now, and Will wow. was the first to begin doing that. Really? Um, and that's in terms of the, the, the libraries that he represents. Hmm.